Okay, I thought I was done with this model, but several of you had some really good comments that I wanted to address. Specifically dealing with my decision of going with a circular hole here and the cutout for the pin. This brings up a great point, which is that when it comes to 3D printing, it's easy for us to bring in some self-imposed constraints that don't need to be there. When I thought about making the pin, it was natural for me to want to go with a circular cylindrical shape because that is what I'm used to seeing. Traditionally, this part would have been made on a lathe, so the shape makes sense. Even though I'm no machinist, my mind automatically pictured this shape because it's what I've seen. I haven't seen many designs that look like this. So I went with the cylindrical design. The problem was that the hole needed for the pin was going to be 3D printed in a vertical orientation. Weighing all my options, I accepted that this was going to be the best orientation to 3D print the frame, and I would simply have to do a bit of cleanup work after, since printing holes in a vertical orientation doesn't give you the best results. Turns out there was one other option I hadn't considered, and that's what I want to go into today. One beautiful aspect of 3D printing is that it removes a lot of the constraints that normally bound us but we have to consciously approach our designs with this awareness, otherwise we subconsciously obey rules that no longer apply, limiting our design freedom. So I'd like to shout out a few of you who helped me realize that this is exactly what I was doing. Brandon Owen7563 first pointed this back in part three with this comment. Great tutorial, I thought of maybe a slight tweak to the design to make things fit better together in print. Maybe changing the joint between the frame and the peg. Change from a circle to a triangle joint, just so the frame prints better as the circle might distort too much printed upright. I didn't quite understand the comment at first, thinking he was referring to making the shaft triangular. This was later clarified after Usafa 1987 stated, by the way, for the design, there is no requirement for the snap in section to be circular and thus printing with the bridging and needing to be cleaned up. That could easily have been a triangle that would have printed fine with no overhang issues. And finally, Quigbo who stated, for the top of the hole, modeling in a teardrop works pretty well. And I think that you are all correct. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at some best practices of changing a Fusion 360 design without causing the entire thing to break. How to address the things that do break and some best practices along the way. All right, here's our familiar design here of our rack and pinion. And if I turn this to the back, well, we see this is one I've kind of already started designing. I didn't want to start here. I want to start with the fresh design. Let me show you a quick tip here. If I open up my panel, my data panel here, and I click here where it says the version number, so V6, I can click on show all versions. And the first one I created here that I saved, I'm gonna open that. And that's gonna go ahead and bring me back to that version. And if I swing this back around, you'll see that that is still a hole at that point. And you get this little flag up here telling you that you're not working with the latest version, which is fine. If you click on it, it'll restore it, which I don't wanna do. Okay, so I've got my design here and just a little refresher on how I built this. So you can see I have three components here. We've got our spur gear here and then our rack and then our base. And I'll activate the base and untoggle the spur gear and the rack. And if you recall, the base was made with two separate bodies. We have our uh, pin here and then we've got our frame. So let's go ahead and rename those so it'll just make it easier to go back and forth. So pin here, I'm gonna call that and then I'm gonna change this from body one to frame. Okay, now that I've got those two, let's do a quick look at how this was designed because that's gonna sort of help um, determine what's the best way to go ahead and make the changes here. And then um, once we get errors, if we do get errors, we'll know, you know, have a little more insight into how to fix those. So first, remember I started with a sketch here. I took this profile and then I extruded that out, a symmetric extrusion to give me this shape. And then it looks like I came in with the sketch and that sketch there is on the back here where I made two circles. And then the next thing I did was create an extrusion. So that extrusion would have been for the pin here to give me that uh, cylinder. And then another extrusion of that inner circle here to give me for um, the longer cylinder there. Um, the next button there was the uh, offset or the next feature here. And if we double click on that offset, it'll show us what that was. 
So here what I did was I took this back wall and this front portion here and I um, offset those negative 0.2 millimeters in both directions. And the purpose of that was to give me some clearance here for the rack to move back and forth. All right, so let's see, I'll click cancel there and let's go one more. So this is a Boolean operation and with that, that allowed me to cut the pin from the frame here to give me the shape here. And then if I go one more, we've got another offset. And this offset, if I double click on it, you can see what that did was it gave me the clearance here for the hole. So that one was a negative 0.1 millimeter clearance to allow for uh, the pen to fit there and give me a nice sort of friction fit. Okay, now that we see how this design was built, let's talk about the best approach here to uh, change this circle to be a triangle. Um, so the place you're probably gonna wanna start is that sketch where I created this circle. So let's go ahead and open that. I'm gonna double click here on the timeline. And that was that second sketch there. So I'll untoggle bodies and I'm just gonna show the current sketch. Now, when you need to make a change to a sketch and you don't want it to break the rest of your design, you want to avoid deleting sketch entities. So you can come in and delete, for example, sketch dimensions and sketch constraints and give them new constraints and those will translate fine. It, your design will be updated and it, it will work great. But when you go ahead and delete, like if I delete a circle or any other sketch entity, then I'm, I'm causing trouble. So here I'm kind of faced with a dilemma. The only way for me here to change the circle to a triangle is to just delete it and make a new triangle. I can't edit the circle and make it a triangle. So unfortunately, this is the way I'm gonna have to go. So I'm gonna grab the circle here, hit delete, and then I'm gonna come in with a polygon, circumscribe polygon, Start it at the origin there, start dragging it out, hit tab, give it three for three sides, and I'll go ahead and hit enter here. I'll take this top edge here, make that horizontal for now, and I'm gonna hit D for dimension, and let's go ahead and make this 30 millimeters. All right, now I'm gonna create an offset of this. So I'll go to modify, down to offset, select the triangle, and I'm gonna go to five millimeter offset, and click okay. Okay, now that I have the sketch that I want, I'll click finish sketch. And there are a couple things here I want to point out. Uh, for example, if I untoggle the frame, you can see that Fusion was smart enough to know that, okay, I took that circle that was there, I changed it to a triangle, so it went ahead and changed the shape here of the model to a triangle. Not only that, but if we untoggle the pin and bring the frame, we can see that it carried that over. It said, okay, since that pin has been changed to triangular shape, I'm gonna assume that you wanted this cutout here to also be triangular. So those stay intact, but not everything is as it seems because if I go back to this extrusion here that made the pin, you can see that in the dialog box here, it says missing profiles. Normally it would highlight it yellow, telling you that uh, something's off here, but I have a good idea of what you're trying to do, so I'm not gonna break anything. Um, but here we don't see that and it's not until you open that profile that you see that it has missing profiles and easy to fix We can just bring that sketch back into view and then just tell it which profiles we want So in this case, I'm going to click here in the circle and it will go ahead and update those profiles We'll click OK and there we have it So in cases like that where you have to delete a shape and remake it expect to go back to the extrusion that referenced that profile and remake those selections all right, let's keep going forward and see what else we need to fix here. Now here I have to make a few more changes. I want this cutout here to go all the way through. So I'm gonna go back to that edit feature there. And for that distance, instead of negative three millimeters, I'm gonna say distance to object. And my object, I'm gonna reference the front of my frame and click okay. And now that cutout goes all the way through. All right, you're, you keep seeing this error here. This is referencing this last offset here. It's not an error after every change I make. It's just every time it goes back to the model workspace, it tells me I have an error. And we're gonna address that in a few minutes. Okay, next I'm gonna bring the pin in and I wanna add this outer profile here to my body there. So I'm gonna create a new extrusion here, E for extrude. I'm gonna take this arrow and drag it out and let's go negative three millimeters and hit enter. Okay, 
So now we have this shape here. And I want to bring up another point here. So if I go back to the frame, you'll see that the cutout is not what I want it to be. So I really want this shape here to be cut out of this frame. The problem though is that this extrusion, I created it at the end of the timeline. So it was created after this Boolean operation. And that Boolean operation is what cut the pin from the frame. So there's a couple ways I can address that. One way is I can, I can try to select this combine feature here and that Boolean operation and have it reference the extrude feature here. Problem with that though is that the extrude feature was created after the combine feature there. So it grays it out, it doesn't allow me to select it. So we'll just say cancel there. And so the only option here, instead of deleting and remaking things, is taking advantage of your timeline properties here. Now watch this, keep an eye here on this cutout. And if I take this extrude feature and drag it back in time and I put it before that combine operation, notice how this updates and Fusion knows, okay, if you're telling me that that feature there was created before the combine, then that means by the time we get to the combine, this is what this is going to look like because that pin shape has changed and this is what you want it to be. So even if you create things after the fact, in some cases you are able to bring them back by just dragging them and this will update your design. So again, much faster and efficient to go this route than to delete this and try to remake that combine operation. Okay, let's make a few more changes here. I don't like how sharp these corners are. So I could come in and fill it this and then go back to the pin and fill it that as well. But let's do it a different way. So here, I'm going to go ahead and add some fillets here. So F for fillet and I'm going to select each of these edges. So three on the outside, three on the inside. I'm going to do a two millimeter fillet there and click OK. Now here we've kind of have the same situation. If I go back to the frame, bring that, you see that the pin is filleted, but the frame is not. Now, what I could have done is actually drag this timeline here back to before the combine again and done the fillet there. I can say go here and make the fillet, but because I didn't do that, I can use that same approach where, again, let's look at the back of this. I'm going to take that fillet operation and just drag it back before the combine and notice how that adds the fillets to the frame there. So again, if I take that fillet, drag it back to after the combine, we get sharp edges and I drag it to before, our edges are now filleted as well. Because again, we're telling it to assume we did the fillet on the pin before we did the combine and this is the result you would get. So a lot more efficient than coming back and adding the fillets there. Another thing I'd like to address is this pin here and sort of how it bumps out a little bit more than the wall of the frame here. Now the reason for that, if you recall, we did an offset on this back wall and that's right here at this point where we took it in 0.2 millimeters. And the extrusion on the pin happened here before the offset. So the way I'm going to address this one is I'm just going to go to that offset feature and it's going to tell me the faces that are selected. I'm going to say, you know what, just add one more face to that and I'm going to command or control select the pin here. Maybe easier to untoggle the frame there and just click and grab the pin there. And you see it's going to add that to the number of selections. So it says there are three faces now instead of two. And then I'll click OK. And now when I bring the frame into view, you can see they are now even. OK, so that addresses that. And let's finally address this little error here that's been screaming at us the whole time. To get a little more information on that error, we'll right click and go to review warning. And here we see it says the face reference is lost. Try editing this feature to reselect the lost faces. So same type of deal, we lost some faces. And if I orbit, it'll actually show you where it thinks those faces should be, right? When this was a circular hole, these were the faces that were offset. Since this offset is the last feature on the timeline, we can actually just delete it and create a new one and it wouldn't affect anything because uh, if there's nothing after it, then that means nothing is relying or referencing um, that feature. But I'll show you how we can just go ahead and edit it. If I double click here and 
bring up that feature, I can simply go ahead and make my selections here. And so number of faces was set to zero because it, it didn't know what we were referencing and I can go ahead and continue selecting. Uh, if you start getting weird stuff like this, especially um, with the offset face tool, and as you select more faces, it'll kind of act weird. It's trying to put an offset there. I'm just gonna set that to zero um, so it doesn't change my design. And then I'm gonna make my selections first here. Sometimes you may need to hold command or control. Now it's gonna be quite uh, a few more selections here than um, we needed for the circle because the circle was just one loop. Here we have all these fillets that we have to select. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and select those. So I should have 12, six for one, six for the other. Here I'm gonna enter that clearance of uh, negative 0 0.1 millimeters. It's gonna make it just slightly bigger. And there we have it. So you see we lost our error there. And if I double click to select it, we have our 12 faces with a negative 0 0.1 millimeter distance for an offset. And here, if I bring the pin in, you can verify that offset. If I zoom in, you can see you have a little spacing in between those two. If I bring the timeline back, you see how it's gone. And I bring it after the offset, it's there. Okay, so that takes care of updating this design so that now we have a triangular pin there instead of a circle. Before I forget, I'm gonna click on this pin here because I made this mistake last time. I forgot to add an offset to that. So modify offset face and I'm gonna do a negative 0.3 millimeter offset on that just to give me enough of a clearance there so that the spur gear will be able to spin around that. All right, I can already hear some of you saying, hey, that triangle you've got there, that's not the best way to orient it because now you've got a bridge here. So we need to flip this upside down so that the narrower side is facing up. Now this allows me to show you how making changes should work in Fusion. So in this case, it would be as simple as going back to that sketch. And let's untoggle the body here. And I want to flip this triangle so the pointy side is facing up. Now, the way you don't want to go about this is to delete the triangle and remake it. And in this case, we don't have to do that. If I go in and try to move this, it's not going to let me. Well, that's because we have a horizontal constraint here. All I have to do here is delete that constraint. Now it's going to let me move this by just dragging one of the points. And when I get it close, I'm going to grab my vertical constraints here and I'm gonna constrain that point to the center origin here. And that's it. Now watch what happens when I click Finish Sketch. The model updated so that the pin is now facing this way, you know, the point your side up. And not only that, it went ahead and changed the frame as well, so that extrusion is facing the correct way, right? Because it'll update everything cleanly down the timeline. So when it's done right, it's a beautiful thing the way it works. To make a simple change like that and having it travel down your timeline and updating all the other features that rely on that shape. Okay, that's the way I would approach this design here to go from a circular cutout here to a triangular cutout. All right, let's 3D print this and see how much better it is. Okay, let's go ahead and 3D print this and see how well it fits. All right, I know this was a bit of a long one, but I hope you found it informative. If you're getting value from these tutorials, consider becoming a Patreon supporter, link below. I've also got some great resources below, including my free Fusion 360 Constraints Cheat Sheet, along with links to my Fusion 360 online courses, including my weekly live class where you can get live help with your designs.